All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on cryptocurrency every day. My name's Austin, and we have a lot to talk about. So hit that like button and let's jump in. As of yesterday, February 28th, 2019, the SEC issued a press release. I first got clued in via Reddit, but this is posted directly on the SEC's webpage as well. In this press release, which was issued yesterday, the Thailand SEC gave its seal of approval for XRP and XLM. Not carte blanche seal of approval, but for certain use cases, it's saying that XRP and XLM have the green light. If you like XRP, if you like Stellar Lumens, then I think you're really gonna like this. The SEC has updated the list of cryptocurrencies that are eligible for initial coin offering investments, or value comparison as base trading pairs against other digital assets traded on crypto exchanges. As a result, the current list of SEC approved coins are comprised of four cryptocurrencies. Those four are now Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and Stellar. Before we talk big, big picture in terms of the implications and what this means for cryptocurrency, let's just unpack exactly what the SEC, the Thailand SEC, keep that in mind, is saying that they're allowing Stellar and XRP to do. And they're saying that in the future, if you want to invest in ICOs, uh, which you need, you know, you, traditionally, you'd, if you had Bitcoin, you would invest in ICOs with some of the Bitcoin you had or Ethereum. So if you wanna invest in ICOs or you just wanna buy other cryptocurrencies with trading pairs on, on digital asset exchanges or crypto exchanges, they now allow XRP and Stellar Lumens to be those trading pairs, to be those uh, coins that you can use for ICO investments. And you know, nobody really talks about this, but one of the biggest use cases that we especially saw in 2017 with Bitcoin and Ethereum is one of the biggest use cases is that you need Bitcoin to buy other altcoins. You have to buy Bitcoin first. And if you wanna do it a little faster, you need to buy Ethereum first to buy those other altcoins. And honestly, that was one of the biggest use cases that pumped these two cryptos in 2017. So what are the implications? What does this mean for cryptocurrency? Well, when new people do come into the space, uh, they'll have other options. Uh, they'll have to either hold Stellar or hold XRP as well to buy into those other altcoins, which is good for them. But it should be known while they have approved that, it should be noted that this announcement of such cryptocurrency of such cryptocurrency list is not a certification of their legal tender status. So they haven't approved it as a currency by any means. But it's interesting. They're saying these two altcoins are good to go. This is just a very small step because this is SEC Thailand. It's a small domino. Obviously, if this news would have been with the US SEC, that's the, that's the big domino. That's when people will be FOMOing in, I'm sure. This didn't really affect the price today. But you know what? A bunch of small dominoes will eventually knock over that bigger domino. We'll see. It should be noted as well that actually uh, the SEC not only approved uh, Stellar Lumens and XRP, they banned three others that they had traditionally, that they had earlier approved last year. So in the technical sense, Thailand's Security and Exchange Commission issued, um, allowed XRP and, and Stellar Lumens to be, to have these rules, allowed them to do these things last July. At the time, the SEC said that only, that it, if you wanted at the time last July, if you wanted to invest in ICOs or have trading pairs, um, and invest in other cryptocurrencies, you could only do one of three things. You had to either use Thailand's national currency, the BOT, the BOT, the BOT, or you could use up to seven other cryptocurrencies as those trading pairs, or I guess, to invest in ICOs. Back then, last year, it was Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, XRP, and Stellar. Now it's just Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and Stellar. So that they've actually gotten rid of some cryptocurrencies, which doesn't bode well for them. Again, Thailand's a small market, but it's interesting because, I mean, it makes, I'm not sure why they don't give a reason. As this says, the watchdog did not provide any detail as to why the list had been reduced. Although it said it takes into account different factors such as news and other developments related to the tokens. Interesting. I mean, we've definitely heard some bad news with Bitcoin Cash or the, over the hash wars recently. 
Ethereum Classic. I think they did have a 51% attack. But Litecoin, like, there's really been no change to Litecoin over the last six months. Just something to put on your radar, guys. Uh, but if you hold XRP, if you hold Stellar Lumens, then it'll give them e uh, even more of a use case. They're still finding value in those coins as new people in Thailand enter the market. Which got me thinking. What is Stellar doing in 2019? I looked it up. I looked directly on their Twitter. And it's actually just yesterday as well. It said, it's here. The 2019 Stellar Roadmap is now live. I retweeted it. If you follow us on Twitter, you've already seen it. Um, our link to our Twitter is in the description below. But here's the roadmap. And I'm not a developer. I'm not a tech guy. And a lot of these things have to do with technical aspects that you know I don't feel confident trying to explain. But some of the things that I am looking forward to for Stellar in 2019 is they want to improve decentralization while preserving performance, meaning they're trying to add more validators to their network, which obviously the more validators you have, the more decentralized your crypto can become. Uh, make node management faster and easier, easier, so just an optimization. Publish more content. So this, I, w I think a lot of people will find real value in this if Stellar Lumens did this. They plan to publish use case explainers as well as walkthroughs for core concepts. Anything that le lessens the barriers to entry to add some clarity to cryptocurrency, I think will do very, very well. And they're just gonna work on making it faster and continue their work on Starlight, AKA their lightning-like payment channels. This just got published. Uh, so check it out, I'll leave it in the description below. As for XRP's roadmap, I couldn't really, f I don't, they didn't seem to have a roadmap for 2019 ready on their website. If you know of one, please post in the comments. Just wanted to put it on your radar. Next piece of news. And by the way, what do you like better, XRP or Stellar Lumens? Let me know down below. Um, let, let me know down below. I'm just curious, honestly. Next piece of news. After six months of red candles, these candles each represent a month. We are finally in the green. This is the first month in a long time that we've had a green month, meaning we went up instead of down. How is the community reacting to this? Some One person says, browsing for Lambos as we speak. <laughs> nice. Another person says, taking out the third mortgage here. The more Lambos, the better. Nice. And I guess one more person says, this is that shit that keeps me subscribed to this subreddit. This is why you subscribe. So people are excited. <laughs> we're finally in the green. And these people were kidding. Obviously, that's not a reason to take out Lambos yet. If we actually look on the chart and see, this is the Bitcoin price over the last year. So this would be those six months that we just had red months in a row. But if we zoom in to this month, we're going to see the first time. Yeah, we had some retractions. But we're finally up. Now is not the time to buy the Lambo, but this is good because this is a start. I don't think I can use that domino um, analogy again, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is, oh, maybe that, that doesn't work, a little brick. Whatever the analogy is, this is the first step of many, many steps that will lead to increased adoption and in the price increase. What I'd like to see and what I expect to see is just a bunch of up and down sideways movement as we slowly rebuild and reshape. Let me know what you think. And again, if you're getting any value from today's video, feel free to give it a like. It just helps me grow as a channel. Last piece of news, uh, very interesting to me. There's a point zero zero, and I think possibly one more zero three, uh, one one thousandth or ten hundred thousandth of a Bitcoin for each human alive. Get them while they're cold. This guy did the math. And many people argue that the fact that there are only 21 million Bitcoin in existence, many people say that's the key driver behind Bitcoin's value, especially in the world that rifles through fiat-induced inflation, where governments can print money like crazy. This guy did the math. I'm going to retweet that. I want to support this kind of, this kind of thing. Um, but what he says, if everybody on the planet had an equal number of Bitcoin, we each only be able to have 0 0.003 Bitcoin. That's equivalent to about $11 right now. Today, you can buy this amount for, ju oh, I guess, for just over a dollar. And it won't always be this way. Very interesting perspective. To put it another way, something that I like that Willie Wu said that in terms of the finite supply, 
This is the reason why I think Bitcoin will easily exceed gold's market cap. Gold's market cap. Gold also has a finite supply, but the difference is mathematical scarcity, which we know Bitcoin has, beats perceived scarcity. Because technically more gold can be uncovered. We don't know how much gold there really is. With Bitcoin, we know. And definitely, that's one that does, it gives it value. Let me know what you guys think. That's the news for today. A bit of a late night. Uh, let me know what you night, ow night owls are doing if you're watching it this late. In LA, it's about 9.30 p.m. right now. All right, guys. Appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow.